So this is the one demonstration we have in this class that involves quantum mechanics. And so I have changed from my lab coat into my quantum mechanics outfit. It's an interesting story about this. this uh, I got this when I was a graduate student at Berkeley. I was living with two of my college friends who were roommates who also had jobs in uh, California. Uh, one was named Jim, the other named Susan. We found these great uh, auto mechanics smocks and we actually got these great name tags, although what we discovered in trying to get the name tags was that uh, there are no women mechanics. We could not find a Susan and we must have gone through 500 different labels and we went through Franks and Joes and Smitties and eventually uh, selected Tiny for her name tag. So, but I got a nice gym and this is my quantum mechanics. Sometimes when I'm a theorist and we work on really hard wave functions, we need a big wrench to deal with disentangling the really hard and complex wave functions. But that's for another class. Here we're going to be doing black body radiation. I'm going to ask you to hit the lights. And what we're going to be showing you here is what happens to a regular light when I turn up the power. And as you remember from what we've solved in black body radiation, the radiation, as more and more power goes into the light, it gets hotter and hotter. The hotter it gets, the light changes from being reddish to being orange-yellow to being yellowish and eventually being to white light. Now this light is set up in such a way that we can really see it heat up, but we're not going to get all the way up to the white light. But you'll see how far we can go. So as I start turning up the light power, I'm stopping it right here. You can see this is the early stages where you can just see it, where it's reddish orange. And as I turn it up more, it's becoming a quite more orangish, much less red. It's starting to get even more yellow as I turn it up more. And I've been told that this only goes up to 10. So I have to be careful not to turn it too high. We're getting it all the way up. And this is the maximum that I'm allowed to take it to. And as you can see, I'm going to take it back down. You can see the reverse of this. But this, it's not exactly white, but it's as close as white as we can get with this particular bulb. And now as I pull it back down, you can see that not only does it get dimmer, but the color that is emitted will change. And it gets more reddish as the power gets less and less. You can really see the effect here where it's becoming much more red. And, and then eventually we just won't be able to see it anymore as it disappears. All right, so we're gonna heat things up with a uh, kitchen flame. And there's three pieces of uh, material here. One is sort of a ceramic fiber. Another is a razor blade that we've sort of cooked before and it looks sort of uh, darkened. The fiber is sort of whitish and then a brand new razor blade. Optically, they all look different, but as I start to heat them, so, so the whitish color, the darkish color, and the reflective color, all that's from uh, reflected light. But as I heat them up, they're gonna start to emit their own radiation. And as they get hotter and hotter, uh, the uh, spectrum transitions from red to yellow to whitish. So uh, first I'm heating up, you can turn the lights off, the ceramic fibers, and you can see that that's sort of yellowish a little bit whitish in different places. It heats very quickly. This uh, uh, razor blade that we've heated before, it'll take much longer for it to reach a high enough temperature to start to become emissive. But here we go. You can again see that transition from reddish to orangish, yellowish to getting quite hot. Um, same color, different appearance in reflected light, but in emissive light, thermally emissive uh, radiation as a common spectrum. And then finally, the shiny razor blade, brand new one, again, takes a while to heat it up, but it'll start to emit with the same black body spectrum. 